Now, towards the end of our stay, I decided to walk from the hotel, climb up the Mount of Olives to get a sunset view of the city. On the way, something caught my eye. To my Filipino friends and family, do you see it? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing my miscellaneous musings or outtakes that didn't end up in my previous 28 reviews from this awesome trip to Israel. On March 9th, we visited Tel Megiddo and was able to see the Valley of Megiddo where it's believed the Battle of Armageddon will take place. A few days later, on March 13th, a roadside bomb went off at the Megiddo Junction, which is just a mile south of Tel Megiddo. One man was injured from the blast. We did drive right by this spot on our way to Nazareth after visiting Megiddo. Now, I just want to point out, despite this incident, the entire time we were in Israel, I never once felt unsafe or uneasy regardless of where we went. Something you may not be aware of is that not all biblical sites are in Israel-controlled areas. Two that we visited were in the Palestinian-controlled West Bank. The first one we came to in the West Bank was Jericho. Now, most everyone is familiar with the walls of Jericho and how they fell in the book of Joshua. You can clearly see the difference in Palestinian-controlled towns versus Israeli-controlled towns from the warning signs where Israeli citizens are not allowed to the lack of infrastructure. Unfortunately, we didn't get to tour the actual ancient Jericho, which is also called Tel es Sultan. We only came to eat at the Mount of Temptation restaurant for lunch. Why is it called this? Tradition believes that this nearby mountaintop is where the devil took Jesus for the third temptation. The Bible does not name the mountain, only that it says that the devil took him to a high mountain. Now, there did seem to be some funny business at the restaurant in regards to paying for our food. I think we got overcharged. But all in all, it didn't ruin my day. The other place we visited in the West Bank was Bethlehem. Only two of us went from our group of nine, and honestly, it was not a highlight for me. We were gone most of the afternoon until evening. It was crowded, lots of traffic, and ultimately we didn't see much. We saw an area where maybe the shepherds could have been when the angels appeared to them to announce Jesus' birth. We visited what a stable may have looked like in the first century. Jesus most likely would have been born in a rocky structure like this versus the traditional wooden structure that seems to be popular for our western nativity scenes. Then we visited the Church of the Nativity where it's believed Jesus was born. Inside is the Grotto of the Nativity, which is supposedly the exact location of his birth. There was a really long line to this spot, and overall the place was really crowded, so we just walked around the church. I did have a small chuckle when walking to the Church of the Nativity, as there were a couple of Starbucks knockoffs along the way. In our first night in Jerusalem, my roommate Justin and I walked from our hotel to the Old City to see the Western Wall at night. I did not realize we would be walking through the Muslim Quarter to get there so I wasn't sure what to expect. One thing I noticed right away is seeing many Jews walking through the Muslim quarter, and I saw no animosity from either side. They may not like each other, but I did not notice any displays of hatred between the two groups this night or during the entire trip. Then we arrived at the Western Wall, and it is really stunning at night. A couple of days later... Just a slight hailstorm in front of the Damascus Gate. You see it bouncing off of me. It's starting to hurt. Oof. Wow. How about a rain and hell storm with an old city flash flood? As a picky eater, I was concerned if I'd find any food that I would enjoy. But man, wherever we went, the food was great. There was even a Mexican restaurant in Jerusalem that was surprisingly good and made great churros. Now, towards the end of our stay, I decided to walk from the hotel, climb up the Mount of Olives to get a sunset view of the city. On the way, something caught my eye. To my Filipino friends and family, do you see it? This chicken restaurant is using a photo of a bucket of chicken from Philippines' own and very popular restaurant, Jollibee. Just a little copyright infringement. Then on our last day in Jerusalem was the Jerusalem Marathon. We partnered with Jonathan Feldstein and Genesis 123 Foundation in their run for Zion. Jonathan's calling is bridging fellowship between Christians and Jews. 
Now, understand, I have not run on purpose in nearly 30 years since I was in high school, so finishing this 10K portion was already going to be difficult. And to make it even more of a challenge, I was struggling this entire trip with plantar fasciitis in my left foot, and on the day of the run, I was really under the weather. I ran a little, but mostly walked. Out of the nine of us, I finished third at 1 hour, 35 minutes, and 28 seconds, but hey, at least I finished. That night, we had a traditional Shabbat dinner, although I do not have any photos as to not be disrespectful to our host, since they do not use electronic devices, among other things, during this 24-hour period. Again, this video is just the random things that happened on this bucket list trip that did not find their way in my actual 28 reviews. Whether it's seeing the Bible come alive at the Sea of Galilee, Capernaum, in Getty, or throughout Jerusalem, to walking through the streets of the Old City, to even going to convenience stores. This trip was so fun and amazing. It was truly a blessing I will remember fondly for the rest of my life. This concludes this short video. In my next video, I will unveil my top 10 sites that I visited on this wonderful trip. Until next time, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.